welcome to News Click. Today we have with us D. Raghunandan, President of All India People's Science Network. We are going to discuss the Indian National Science Congress and the claims made in it by, in a session which is supposed to have dealt with Sanskrit and ancient Indian science. Raghu, good to have you with us. Raghu, you have been trained as an aeronautical engineer. Yes. You have also been in Hindustan aeronautics once upon a time. So what do you think of this Viman Shastra which is displaced by some Captain Boras over there? Uh, it's a very funny thing. This uh, particular document has a history uh, and it is particularly loved by people who uh, advocate the notion that there were aliens uh, descending on our planet about a century ago. You know the tribe uh, and there are many, and so all kinds of people. So this document has been relied on to a great extent by these people because it seems to suggest to them that this technology was so advanced that human beings perhaps could not have invented uh, the technology. All I can say is it's fantastic. Fantastic in the sense it is a total fantasy. Uh, the kind of aeronautics uh, suggested there looks completely unfeasible. It says that these uh, craft could be used for not only travel between cities uh, but also between planets. And there was even somebody, I think, at the Congress in the session mentioned something about a helmet having been found on Mars, which must have come from some statements to that uh, effect. Uh, I think you know that uh, this document was looked into rather seriously by aeronautical engineers uh, uh, and mechanical engineers at the Institute of Science way back in 1974. And they spent a whole year studying this document, going meeting the uh, uh, children of the author of this, investigating around as to where the origins of this are. And what they have found essentially is that uh, it's essentially almost a work of fiction that somebody had sat down and put something uh, together. There are sketches of this so-called uh, aircraft, which uh, Professor Mukunda and his colleagues at the Institute of Science said, no such aircraft could ever fly. I mean, it defies all principles of uh, aeronautics. So that's as far as the Vimana is uh, concerned. The only thing I'll add to this is, just because some epics and legends in India mention Vimanas and have descriptions of it, to then jump to the conclusion that India must have actually had such vehicles, if you go by this, and if you look at legends from all over the world, uh, you've had in India people talking about uh, the head of Lord Ganesha being fitted onto a human body is evidence of uh, plastic surgery. If you went by these kinds of legendary evidences, then you'll have to look at the unicorn, you'll have to look at the minotaur, you'll have to look at all kinds of such fantastic creatures which are there in legends the world over. I don't see how any serious person can look at legends and mythology as a source of hard information. Now, it's an interesting proposition that if we had such advanced science and technology, how come we did not have paper? We have not produced a printing press where we could have written all this down and reproduced it for others and we are talking about this today. The interesting other point that you haven't mentioned but which is there in the Professor Mukunda and other people's that uh, investigation you talked about is this was really a text which is written in modern Sanskrit and a product in their view of something like nine, between 1904 to 1923. Yeah. That's the period that's that right. it said. That's right. So it's not even an ancient Indian no, text. No, it's not. And there is no ancient Indian uh, quote-unquote Sanskrit used here. Not it's at all. It's really quote-unquote modern Sanskrit which is used here linguistically. That's right. And in fact, the author of this uh, uh, book is supposed to have said that the book was revealed uh, to him by Saint Bharadwaj himself, uh, who must have lived a couple of thousand years uh, ago and then came to reveal this text uh, either at night when the author was dreaming or when he was on something. <laughs> I don't know what. So it's, it's been said that uh, Saint Bharadwaj, Muni Bharadwaj, Rishi Bharadwaj, channeled it through that's him. Right, that's right. And wa how uh, Rishi Bharadwaj spoke modern Sanskrit, Nobody channel knows. modern Sanskrit also we don't know. Yeah. But you know, this is only one part of yeah. it. 
the real issue is that the Indian National Science Congress for the first time allowed its platform to be used for what would be really mythical presentations. Now, don't you think there is something to be said for the Indian National Science Congress? Absolutely. I think there's two things that we need to look at uh, here. One is these kinds of uh, pronouncements uh, speak about their votaries, what they think about science and what constitutes evidence in science. They seem to think that any piece of literature from anywhere, two lines from it constitute evidence. Uh, to me, there is a great danger and if you don't mind, I'd like, just like to spend a couple of minutes on this before I come to the Congress uh, itself. The great danger is we saw this happening at the Babri Masjid uh, case. When some people said, we know Lord Ram was born here and when asked for evidence, they said, there's no need for evidence. Our faith says he was, is the same thing going to be now repeated in science? Uh, tomorrow they'll say, what's the need of evidence to show that uh, this existed? We say it existed, therefore it must exist. So are we now going to abandon evidence-based science for faith-based uh, science? So this, can we call it science if it is faith-based? Exact, exactly. So this seems to be the biggest uh, danger. Maybe in history one could have said, you know, there is interpretation, one can interpret things one way or the other. I don't see how you can interpret the principles of aeronautics uh, in the same uh, way as that. That seems to me the biggest danger. And then to the point that you are making, to have such presentations in the Indian Science Congress is extremely dangerous. It shows that the Indian Science Congress in some sense subscribes to this idea of having any theory uh, being floated and it should be called science. The Indian Science Congress is supposed to be a platform for research. Uh, is this a researched paper? If there is, who has done a peer review of this uh, paper and allowed it to be presented? The excuse now being given is this was a side show, a kind of symposium or popular lecture on the uh, site. But that's not how it was advertised. It was advertised as researches based on uh, Sanskrit uh, scholarship. Uh, if so, it speaks very poorly of scholarship and it speaks very poorly of the Indian Science Congress that this has been uh, permitted. I also want to emphasize one more thing. Scientists in India, particularly those who work with government, uh, are under a deep cloud of suspicion in the public mind today on the issue of nuclear energy, on the issue of genetically modified crops, on the issue of BT uh, crops, on large dams, on a variety of issues, people are today not prepared to accept the word of what they consider to be Sarkari science. Because they, they are not sure whether this person is actually accounting a scientific uh, understanding or is he just voicing the uh, opinion of the political masters. If the Indian Science Congress is also going to do this today and they have clearly bent over backwards in order to support the ruling dispensation, this is not going to add to the credibility of Indian science at all. The Indian National Science Congress unfortunately, which it started with the agenda of building Indian science, scientific capability, it started as a part of the national movement because it's older than Indian independence. It really started before that. With this, we can also see its devaluation that the scientists are not the main people who have been seen in the Science Congress. Right. We have seen the Prime Minister who also spoke, as you said, of uh, genetics in Mahabharata or talks about uh, various uh, mythical science again in terms of uh, cosmetic surgery, elephant head. I wish, you know, there's cosmetic surgery which could graft a uh, uh, elephants head even today. Forget about you know <laughs> it being done in the past. Uh, and we have also Harshavardhan who talks about Pythagoras uh, formula being in, uh, in India and so on. So there is a completely perverted sense of science, my mythology being presented as science. But the interesting part of it that there is no Indian science on that platform. 
we had Nobel laureates who had not uh, given too much of space in the public eye. We had Manjul Bhargav, the first Indian to win a Fields Medal, who has also talked about the contributions of Sanskrit in his own sure. mathematical research, sure. but in a completely different way. Sure. And he's related how the proofs, etc., have been arrived at by you know basing on one calculation, then showing how the proof took place about a thousand years later, and so on. But all sure. very, very rigorously developed. None of them had a place. It was really all a political show or the side show that we saw in the National Science Congress. So where is Science Congress going? Uh, I think this has been coming for some time. Uh, those who have been following the Science Congress and those who have been writing about it, including myself, have written precisely this, that in fact the Science Congress today lacks rigor. Uh, we said in this case that there was no peer review. Unfortunately, there is no peer review in almost any of the papers submitted at the Science Congress. It is done by what we have now come to recognize as a culture of patronage in Indian science. If you uh, pay obeisance to uh, your boss, to the head of the institution, he will make sure that you are uh, accommodated. A set of people are called to present a paper. It may or may not be reviewed by anybody. This time, for instance, you had a set of papers on Bt uh, cotton. Whatever may be my opinion or otherwise about Bt cotton, there was not a single paper which opposed the government's point of view on Bt cotton, which is surprising in any scientific conference because a large number of scientists have uh, expressed opinions against uh, Bt cotton. It shows that there is a spirit of uh, gerrymandering or jury rigging uh, going on. Or what you call Sarkari science. Sarkari science. And unfortunately, this trend has deepened uh, over the years and until you restore autonomy of science and autonomy of scientists uh, to genuinely do their own work and establish a culture of peer review and excellence, I do not think you are going to get out of this quagmire. So, what we have instead is this time Sarkari anti science. That's right. But in the spirit of Sarkari science, meaning right. patronage and that's so right. on. So, that's, that's right. where it stands. Unfortunately, yes. Thank you very much, Raghu. We will keep on discussing as and when such issues arise, and the news click will follow anti science and science in the future as well. Thank you very much.